Thank you, uh, Laska Herlock. Uh, and Minister, thanks for coming to the Senate for this debate. I just want to provide some context in anticipation of your response, which, which I haven't seen yet, but I, I, just to lay the groundwork for it. The reason this issue was brought up in the Oireachtas and on Liveline over the last two days was a result of a letter that, uh, we, that I received from Alison McCabe from Breast Care by Alison. Uh, Alison is from the Dauphin County Louth. Alison has been doing this job uh, for nearly 10 or 15 years, if not more. Uh, and Alison was able to show us the potential cuts that were being proposed, not by the Minister, but by the HSC, and reforms to this scheme by the HSC. And I just want to outline the context of what those proposed cuts were, and I want to outline what's happened in the last 24 hours after it's been raised. So these proposals by the HSC, uh, and at the minute, Throughout the country, it's different whether you're in Meath or Louth or Donegal or Cork. It's different, uh, different outcomes for different people based on their geographical area. But in County Louth, where I'm from, uh, at the minute, uh, what you're entitled to are two post-surgery bras, uh, one prosthetic, two if they've had bilateral surgery, one swimming prosthetic, two if they've had bilateral surgery, and one post-surgery swimsuit. Under the reforms proposed by the HSE, uh, you would get a nationwide scheme, but it would be cut, and it would be cut to €60 Euro towards a post-surgery bra, which isn't even sufficient enough to cover the fitting and supply of one post-surgery bra, and €200 Euro towards prosthetics. That was the reform proposed by the HSE to make it a nationwide commitment. There were three other proposals that included, and I'm just going to outline the three. The ladies receiving their first fit following surgery in the acute hospital where the surgery took place. That was one proposal of the reform. The reason why that's not a good idea, Minister, is it's an unrealistic aspiration as breast care teams and hospitals are under extreme pressure and have enough important work to be doing in a hospital setting. This doesn't need to take place in a hospital setting. Second of all, the changes aim to ensure service users who are post mastectomy do not experience an increased financial burden in accessing these items. Again, that doesn't make sense because we are going to cut the uh, funding that they were receiving. Not we, the government, the HSE. Uh, and thirdly, the procedure, does not, uh, the procedure does not include products for sporting. That's swimming, running. Um, and one of the uh, swimming and running, so they don't get that type of sportswear either. So that's what the proposal was. In 2017, the HSE made the same proposal, and Minister Harris, the then Health Minister, said, and I quote, when I, became aware, when I became aware of the current changes, I intervened, and their introduction is now deferred. The Minister for Health last night in the Dáil, and I welcome this response from the Minister, and I quote, the Minister for Health is uh, aware of the reform procedures for the accessing of post mastectomy supports put in place recently by the HSE. The Minister is fully supportive of the provision of these supports to all women, regardless of medical card status. He understands that the threshold of support provided under these new procedures may lead to a number of women receiving less support than previously, and the Minister has asked the HSE to amend the procedures to ensure that no woman currently availing of the scheme or accessing it in the future is at any financial loss. So that is a great thing. And I want to commend the Minister last night for saying that in the Dáil. Uh, and I hope you can reiterate that today, Minister. But the point is that this is an example of HSE bureaucracy. This is an example of reforms being made by the HSE without government approval, without ministerial approval, without a politician's approval. And it's caused a huge amount of widespread anxiety to breast cancer survivors, particularly in my county of Louth, particularly across the island of Ireland. Uh, and I'm glad the Minister has had to come out and clarify and say that there will not be financial cuts to this. That is a good thing. But the HSE and the bureaucrats and the people who designed this reform should never have gotten it to that stage in the first place. Yeah, just, just, to, just to make one point first, I'm not reading out the script that may have been provided to you because it does not reflect the position of the government and it certainly doesn't reflect the position of Minister Donnelly and I'm getting that checked. Um, I've been talking to Minister Donnelly. The position is, first of all, we've championed women's health care from day one. The announcement that the HSE made was not sanctioned and is not and was not agreed by the government. Uh, as soon as Minister Donnelly heard about this, he instructed the HSE to pause this. Uh, he has committed now to increase the supports and that no woman will be left worse off. And Minister Donnelly wants to emphasise that he is champion and the government is champion and the senators here have championed women's health care from day one of this government. And I think that's about as clear as I can put this issue. This has been reversed by the minister and no woman will be worse off.
I really want to thank you for that, Minister. I, I couldn't ask for a more unequivocal response from a government minister and from this government, of which I am hugely supportive of, and I've always been supportive of. Uh, and my issue, again, Minister, which you've alluded to it is, this occurred in 2017, and a health minister had to come out and say it, you know, i.e. a HSC bureaucrat trying to reform the system, and a minister had to come out and publicly say it. This has happened again in 2024, where a HSE official or a bureaucrat has tried to come out and reform a system, and a minister has had to come out and refute it and say that is not going to happen on my watch. And I think that is a great thing. I think that is an important thing. But there is no way uh, that these types of things should happen or get into the public domain without either ministerial approval, political approval, or government approval. Uh, and as a result of that bureaucracy getting out, it has caused a huge amount of stress. But I am so happy that this government has stood very strong beside, behind these cancer survivors. I am so happy that we've made it clear, black and white and unequivocal, and I think this is a good response from the government. And I want thank to thank you, you for that, you Minister. Want to make your yeah. I do. Uh, I want to thank the Senator for raising it, for, and for many uh, people for raising it, and indeed constituents, and indeed some people in Loud are on to me as well uh, about this particular issue. Um, and uh, again, I say the script that has been provided here by the HSC or whatever is, does not reflect uh, what the Minister uh, has said. Um, I am speaking uh, with the uh, authority of the Minister, and I can state categorically that the Minister has instructed the HSE to write back out to every woman they contacted about this proposal, to tell them that it's not going ahead, um, and while we will increase supports in parts of the country where the supports are lower, no area of the country will see their current level of support decrease, and that is uh, direct from the Minister, and I want to thank the Minister for that and for everybody for raising this, um, and I think that you know, people in, in the administrative side of the state who do a huge amount of good work uh, need to be aware that these issues are of critical importance uh, and, uh, to, to, to all of us, to the women of the country. Um, and indeed, last night, uh, speaking to the Tarnishta, uh, he reminded us that he was the Minister for Health to introduce this scheme at the time. Uh, and there's a huge political commitment to this. I think the women of Ireland, um, breast cancer survivors, um, need to be assured that we, we, we have their back and uh, we will support us. And thank you again for raising this. Thank, thank you. you.